Today, this Commodore fanboy is going to unbox a TI 994. No, not that one. Nope, not that one either, but this one. This beige model is a last of the line and last ditch effort designed to lower the price, compete with Commodore, my favorite brand, and save the TI computer line. Let's see what happened and see how good this TI 994A actually is. This TI is a first for me, and because of this, hang on, it's going to be a long and informative, I hope, video. My followers know I'm a Commodore computer fan since my very first computer, the Commodore VIC-20, and I'm closely following the Mega 65 development. However, felt a great disturbance in the force. The cause of the disturbance was the purchase of a non-Commodore retro computer, the Texas Instruments, or TI, 99-4A. In this video and the companion blog post, which you're going to want to be sure and check out, it's gonna have lots of great information. What I'm gonna do is unbox the TI 994A, look at this computer for the first time because I've never owned one, and kind of share some experiences during a power up and first look. So what caused this disturbance? Well, my neighbor and buddy over at Jamie's Hack Shack, also a couple of houses down, also on Twitter, at Slowfunk, sent me a DM and said, hey, you wanna make a day trip to the Vintage Computer Festival Midwest in Elmhurst, Illinois, just right outside Chicago. It was about a four hour trip up, four hour trip back, and about a four hour trip there for a total of about 12 hours that day. We arrived at VCFMW about four hours later and began to make our way through the halls and the hallways of the show. Two large hallways housed the vendors and two large conference rooms displayed a range from pets to apples to altars to telephony. It was amazing to see these old and cherished projects and modern recreations alike. After Jamie and I had exhausted our time on the show floor, we headed back into the hallway to take a look at the many vendors. We spent an inordinate amount of time at the Bonus Life Computers table. What a collection. I suspect I was not going to walk away from this table without a purchase. Jamie checked out the Commodore 64s while I was looking at these Texas instruments that were on the table. And one particularly caught my eye. It was a TI 994A beige in what looked like mint condition with a box and complete documentation set. This thing looked brand new or at least very lightly used. The owner opened the box up and said, hey, wanna give it a try? I gave him the affirmative and he carefully removed it from the box. How much I asked? 70 bucks, he replied, whoa. $70? Used a video DIN adapter and plugged it into the monitor uh, with the RCA plugs. After a few tries, the TI blue screen and color bars appeared and it was beautiful. What do you think, he asked. You know what, this is just quirky enough that I want it. Pack it up. I have cartridges for $5, he said, and he handed me a tub full. Excellent. We'll take a look at those cartridges in a little bit. The vendor rang up the total added the 8% Chicago tax, whoa, and packed it all up for me. In the meantime, I noticed Jamie was selecting a Commodore 64. We would both walk out with new to us retro computers this day. As I stated, I am not familiar with Texas Instrument computers. I do remember them from the day, and I remember the black and silver metal versions. I don't ever remember a beige version, and I think that's one of the reasons this particular one caught my eye. I know it's not the original, TI-994 or the upgraded 994A, but it's this new beige version, but I really like the looks of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at a short history of the TI. Even though I had a VIC-20 at the time, I knew about the TI from the many computer magazines I would read. I always saw it as a step up from the Commodore VIC-20 due to its 40 column screen, business quality keyboard for later models, and ability to hang additional options off the side and that black and steel industrial design was just kicking in the 1980s. I researched the history of this device and found an interesting connection to Commodore computers. So here's a synopsis from Wikipedia. It was released in 1979. The TI-99-4 includes a TMS-9900 microprocessor. What sets this processor apart is that while a majority of home computers at the time were 8-bit, this processor was a 16-bit with caveats 
that we'll not cover in this video. However, I recommend that you go over to Noel's Retro Lab. Got a link in the video description where he's got a whole playlist of the TI-99 4A and does such a great job of talking about the hardware. Go check him out. He'll do a much better job than I will describing the hardware. There were shortcomings to the original model, such as the keyboard, which was chiclet at the time, uh, ROM-only software options, some tight-fisted developer control, and some cost. These were addressed in a 1981 model, the TI-994A. Cost was cut in half, and expansion was provided by the Peripheral Expansion System, or PES, or Papa Echo Sierra. TI added another novelty, their famous ti speech synthesizer. While developer tools were released, TI continued its tight-fisted control of software distribution and limited the availability of software. A cost-reduced beige version, that's the one I got, was released in June 1983 with a renaming of the 4A PCB as a QI, Quality Improved Board. Per Mainbyte at mainbyte.com, the QI included additional circuitry that extended their heavy hand on developers. Per that website, one change that was made that created major grumblings was TI's decision to change the internal workings to lock out unlicensed ROM cartridges. This was done to keep other third-party companies from producing cartridges for the TI. Not all QI or quality improved consoles have this feature. What we're looking for is a boot up screen that says 1981 as opposed to 1983. Now I don't remember if the TI I purchased had the 1981 or 1983 date on it. We're gonna find that out together in this video. Later, the cost of the TI was cut to less than $100. This was less than the cost to manufacture. Why would TI do this, you're wondering? Well, that's where Commodore enters the story. Commodore dropped the price of the VIC-20 to $100 and ruled the personal computer market in the early 80s. TI, in a last ditch effort to save their personal computer market, decided to sell low in hopes that software and peripherals would make up the difference. Their gamble, unfortunately, did not pay off, and TI experienced a second quarter loss of $100 million. In March of 1984, Texas Instruments discontinued the TI-99-4A oh, and got out of the personal computer market. Score another win for Commodore, who would later get their come up. It's 10 years later. All right, we're getting close to the unboxing of my new TI, but before we do, let's talk about the specifications. What is inside this little computer. Well, first of all, we have a CPU, of course, a Texas Instruments TMS 9900 at three megahertz, 16 bit with a 64 pin dip. Now, here's what's interesting. It is a 16 bit processor, but it's on an eight bit bus. And that's as far as I'm gonna go into the technical specifications. Again, check out Noel's Retro Lab if you want some great information. Memory is 256 bytes. Did you just say bytes? Did I read that right? Scratch pad RAM for the CPU with 4K and 32K expansion available. 256 bytes? That's not kilobytes, folks, that's bytes. However, it also comes with 16 kilobytes of video display processor RAM. Interestingly, once you run out of the 256 scratch pad RAM, you could start to steal from the 16 kilobyte video display processor through some techno programming wizardry video. It is a 32 single color sprites in defined layers, allowing higher numbered sprites to transparently flow over lower numbered sprites. So there are sprites included, much like the Commodore 64, but unlike the VIC-20 of its time. Text mode is 40 by 24 uh, with uh, 256 six by eight user definable characters. Uh, when you do that though, you're going to lose your sprites. According to the specifications, also you cannot control your foreground or background color via basic. Interesting. You do have a bitmap mode of 256 by 192 pixels, no more than two colors in an eight pixel row, full 15 color palette plus the transparent color that we talked about earlier. Multicolor mode of 64 by 48 pixels. Each pixel may be any color. All 32 sprites are then available. 
It does come with some sound through the TMS 9919 and later the SN94624. There are three voices and one noise, white or periodic. The voice, voices generate square waves from 110 hertz to approximately 115 kilohertz. So those are the specifications. It's a lot of background information. You know what, you don't wanna hear me yammer anymore. Let's get into the actual computer that I purchased and let's do an unboxing. Now, normally when we do these unboxings, we tend to open the box and then we show kind of the accessories. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit today. We're gonna to show some of the accessories. Actually, there's only three accessories and they are solid state cartridges from TI. Check these out. These are the cartridges that will go into the computer. We will take a look at these in detail and uh, probably some other video, it won't be this one. This particular one is Parsec. This is a, uh, a game similar, I believe, to Defender. I did have a chance to plug it in. It looked like gameplay was very similar to Defender. Also had the opportunity to pick up this one, Music Maker. I want to see what kind of sounds we can make out of the TI. And then we also have Termular, ter Termular, how about that? Terminal Emulator 2. All right, let's open the box. My very first Texas Instruments home computer 99.4a. All right, let's dig in. Open up our box here. Okay, and on the top, you'll notice we have several manuals. First of all, let's go ahead and pick up the first one. This is the TexNet Information Service, a special edition of the Source. Oh, the Source. I remember the Source. The Source was an online bulletin board system of its day. Not a bulletin board, but an online a service. We have the original manual. You can see that TextNet information services can bring new interest, new convenience, new knowledge to everyone in your family. Next thing we find in here is an addendum. This is our TV radiation warning addendum. And it says, caution, federal radiation emission standards set forth in regulations 21 CRF, blah, 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 blah. Uh, recommends the use of video modulator only. Well, we will be breaking that rule. We will not be using the radio TV mod video modulator. So hopefully we won't end up with radiation sickness. Next thing we have is a couple of manuals here. Now I'm gonna go first to the, uh, let's do the user's reference guide. Here we go. Here's the user's reference guide. Now inside here, I'm gonna pull out another one though because it says, read this first. All right. Quick steps to get you set up and started now. And you can see one, two, three. So the first thing we're gonna do is run away. The next thing we're gonna do is point at somebody. And then the next thing we're gonna do is run down some stairs. I really don't get these. We can unpack and check things over. We're gonna do that. If you purchased a TI color monitor, we did not. We can set it up. Here's everything we need to do set up. Now here's that uh, video five pin DIN connector. Now, nice surprise is I have that connector. Connect our power cords. It does have an interesting power cord. We'll see that as we go through. Check the connections. We definitely need to do that. Turn it on. Here's what you'll see. Hopefully this is what we'll see. I did see that when I, when I purchased the computer originally. And then uh, this menu, which we'll talk about. And then your next step. So there's our first steps. Not a whole lot of running, pointing, or running upstairs in this particular manual. So not sure where that comes from. Then we also have the user's reference guide. One of the things I love about the user's reference guide, I'm not sure why, but I just love that they have these Texas Instrument hole punch. Why do I say Texas Instrument hole punch? It just seems like a lab manual. It seems like something that some engineer at TI would stick in a three ring binder and just write in it all day long. So I really like that. It's got a good technical quality to it. One of the things I like is you do have your command you have the information about the command, how to use it, but then you have the examples over to the right. And that's very, very engineering paper-like. Very, if you've done anything with engineering paper or engineering reports, you kind of see that, that sample kind of layout, which I really like. We'll set that to the side. We also have the beginner's basic. Here we go again. We're doing some things with, I don't know what we're doing here, but it is kind of cool in an 8-bit style. In this manual, interestingly, no hole punches though. I wish they would have thrown the hole punches on this one as, as well. We could have thrown both of those in a nice three ring binder, kept everything all organized. If you wanna get started in basic, this is everything you need to know right here. The immediate mode, 
simple programming, more programming power, fun and simulations. Oh, that's that's cool. And computer graphics. You know, I did a whole plus four series where I went through the user's manual. Would I want to do that with the TI? You know what? I might. This could be a great way for me to document my journey through the TI 99.4a and also provide uh, a little basic training or beginner's basic for viewers. So who knows? So now there's other stuff in here. We are not done. We're not even to the computer. Here is our TI 99.4a basic reference card. You know, I was looking at a lot of videos on the TI and some unboxings. I don't think I've ever seen one online this complete with everything. Uh, if you have, um, I'd love to love to see it. Send me the link and I'd love to check it out. But check this thing out. This thing just expands all the way out to here. And it's our basic quick reference. So if you want your quick reference guide for all of your commands, don't know if all of them are there, but I really like this. Let me go ahead and fold this back the way I found it. Oh, looks like it actually goes like this. That's kind of cool. Look at that. And then you can flip it. Next thing we have is Texas Instruments announces the Computer Advantage Club. Annual membership includes hands-on computer experience, quarterly newsletter, membership card, TI Home Computer, and activity book. That's pretty cool. Introduction, the computer is clearly an instrument for success. All right, I feel like I'm gonna be successful. Here are the metropolitan areas served. You can see that here. Uh-oh, we have an addendum. The addendum states that when using the wired remote controllers with the computer, you will find that you cannot move an object upward north if the alpha lock key is on. What in the world? If you experience this situation, simply turn the alpha lock key off. Here is a U.S. consumer products suggested retail price for June, December, 1982. What do we have here? If your local retailer does not stock the hardware accessories or software packages you want, Order them. Man, that'd be a fun number to call and see what it is. Now, maybe we won't do that because it may not be a number we want to call. And if you're not familiar, back in the day, Bill Cosby was the spokesman for this computer. My, how times have changed. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. This is my Texas Instruments home computer. Great for learning. The only thing wrong is I never get to use it. See, this morning the kids learned about math. Perfect. This afternoon, my neighbors learned how to balance their budget. Then these guys came by to learn how to fight aliens. Now I'm going to learn chess. Observe the master. With the home computer from Texas Instruments, you're not just playing, you're learning. Checkmate! Well, I guess you can learn from losing. Here's the Texas Instruments home computer program library addendum. And in the Texas Instruments home computer program library addendum, what do we have? We have software. Lots of software. What can you purchase? Well, you can purchase something called Alpiner. You can purchase something called Othello, Chisholm Trail, Tunnels of Doom, Parsec. A lot of stuff that I've heard of before. That's why I could get lost in this for a while. Again, nice that this is included. Not seen that. We also have the Texas Instruments Home Computer Hardware Accessories list. Here's our old buddy Bill again with the Texas Instruments Home Computer Program Library. So this seems to be another version of the addendum here. Put the two together and you've got the complete list of all the software available at the time. Oh, somebody was evidently interested in weight control and nutrition. Somebody was gonna purchase that. Whoever the original purchaser of this computer was. Looks like they had an interest in that. I wish they hadn't circled it, but hey, I, I get it. This is somebody else. Let's see, did they circle anything else? The last piece that we have in here is the Triton Products Company presents the TI-994A Spring 86 catalog. If we look, we've got kind of a mix of product documentation here. We've got the June, December 82 consumer product suggested retail price, but we've got the Spring 86 catalog. Interesting to know why both of these were included because surely four years later, this thing was outdated. As a matter of fact, we know it was because you could purchase the TI-994A for a lot less than $450 by the time this catalog came out. Hey, you can get a free joystick if you turn page 11. TI-994A computer special, quantities are limited. So we've gone from $450 to $89.95.
Let's find out how to get that free joystick, shall we? How do you get it free? You buy any six game cartridges on pa pages 10, 11, and 12, and you get the free one. So cartridges were starting to drop too. Look at this, you could get Defender for $10, Moon Patrol for $10, and these are from the, I believe the Atari Soft. Yes, they are, it's the, from the Atari Soft collection. Uh, here's Star Trek, ooh, I've gotta find that. Beam aboard the mighty starship USS Enterprise. Need to find that one. Okay, so that is all of the documentation. Let's go ahead and drop in the box and check out the hardware. All right, let's go ahead and do the accessories first. We'll go ahead and pull this out. So this came in this, like this. So it was safety checked. You can see that here. It had the safety check sticker on it, which I'm glad to say that this is still pretty intact. This box really could have been today. I mean, there's very little wear and tear. So you would open this up to make sure that safety check. You would fold this out carefully and inside, you would find over here our RF modulator. Now check this RF modulator. This is not a cheap RF modulator. This thing is substantial. Look, it, it even the uh, stickers haven't even been used on the back. You've got the area for the antenna to pass through. You've got your switch for modulator to TV antenna, which was popular in the day. Man, that is still tight too. This is this feels brand new. We also have our channel select down here, channel three and four. Let me go ahead and put that back in here. Again, just in beautiful shape. It's a great, great testament to whoever purchased this, either didn't use it or took really good care. And then the power supply, I was really impressed with the power supply quality. There's, uh, there's very little wear, as you can see here. We've got this great TI logo there, see that? And uh, we've got a couple of cables coming off the brick. Let me go ahead and unravel this. Here's our warnings on the bottom, and then you've got the two cables. I'm gonna set this here. I want you to see what the other ends of the cables are. Here is our plug. It's a, it's a very interesting plug. You can see that right there. So that's the plug that goes in the back of the computer. Got a bunch of stuff on here. Look at this. We've got, what is going on here? We've got this plug in a plug. It looks like it's been plugged. What is that? And then we kind of come up here and we see we've got this right here, which says, for use only with Texas Instruments adapter model. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put the modulator up because we're not gonna need that. And now, the moment you all have been waiting for, the computer. Let's go ahead and open this. It's a lift, if I remember, right here. Oh, look at that. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this out carefully. Love the styrofoam packing in this, look at this. You know, in Commodore, we would have the ones where we'd slide it on the sides, right? This one, it's all right in here. Okay, here's the box for the Texas Instruments home computer. We, on the front, of course, we have kind of the hero shot of the computer right here. We have the Texas Instruments home computer 99.4A. You can see where somebody purchased this for $50 at some point, probably in the clearance bin at the end of the life of these. Over here on this side, you can see uh, an original price was $59.99 from a company called McDade and Company. Finally, on the back, we have all the information about the computer that you would want to know when looking at the back. Powerful memory, 16K RAM expandable to 52K and 26K of ROM. Connects directly to your TV. Broad choice of useful software. Simple and simple system expansion. Yeah, simple if you wanted things just thrown off of it. Although they are highlighting the PES system over here, which was a way to not have these things dangling off the side all the way out to here. These I love. I wish I could find these expansion units in that style. Um, I'm not sure I've seen any of those online. So if you have, let me pull that up here. If you have seen these expansion systems in that color that match this particular unit. Please let me know, I'd love to see that. All right, and there it is, the TI-994A. The first thing I'm gonna need to do is get a little bit of glue and put underneath this label. This label has been popping up. Now, if you're familiar with this, you'll notice one thing is missing and it is this. Yes, even this was still intact and included. This is our key template. You throw that up here and you could get these different key templates for different software. Now, here's what's really weird about it, and we'll take a look at it later, but there's no delete key. It's here with the one, up here with delete. Insert, erase, clear, begin, procedure. Procedure? That's what I'm assuming. Aid? Whoa, there's some aid. Redo and back and then quit. So if you didn't have this, if you just had this right here, 
and you're programming in basic, good luck figuring out what that was, especially in a pre-internet age. I guess we would go to our manuals over here and figure out what's going on. Love this keyboard. Listen to that. This is really a great sounding keyboard. I do not love the small inner key. Uh, the shift key is, you got a tiny one over here, you got a big one over here. So this, this keyboard is a bit of a mess as far as layout, but man, what a great sounding, good feel key. I would, I would type on this keyboard today. So over here we have our on off, right there. This is our cartridge port. So if we want to install a cartridge, we come up here, we plug it in and boom, we turn it on and then we would have the option to call up that software. It doesn't boot automatically as we'll see later. Now I've heard rumors and fun things that, and I, I, I should not be doing this, but uh, these things evidently got hot enough uh, in the earlier versions that you could set your coffee there and do that. Let's not do that. So you would go ahead and turn that off, remove your cartridge. And this one is really in good shape. It just, it connects well and I know it works. You got some venting back here. Let's go ahead and kind of come around the back and the sides. Here, we have our joystick port. Now it looks like a normal Atari 2600 joystick port, but as you're gonna learn in our next video, that is not the case. You really need uh, the TI joysticks. Yep, not one, two. You gotta buy two because this supports two at one time, but there is an adapter, which we will talk about. On the back, we have our video den over here. We have our power, that's that, that connector that we saw earlier. And then here, don't plug a joystick into that. That's for your cassette. And uh, that's interesting how that would work. We'll have to take a look at that at some point. Over here on the side is that infamous expansion module. Looks like, I can't tell, looks like there may have been a cover on that. I, I'm going to assume that this didn't have a cover. If it did, it's gone. If this model came with a cover, if you could let me know, uh, that'd be interesting. If we look on the front, you get a really good detailed look at our keyboard. Let's turn it over, be very careful. Look at how, look at the shape of this thing. It is just in beautiful shape, look at that. Just great shape, got our vents, no dirt on it. The feet are still intact, look at that. There you go, there is my brand new Texas Instruments Computer 99.4A in beige tan, not sure what we're gonna call this, but uh, love the color, excellent condition. Thank you to the seller. The seller does have an online website. I would highly recommend him. He was fabulous. Check out the video description below, but more importantly, check out the companion blog post. It's gonna have a lot more information about my purchase of the system. Okay, we're gonna turn this TI on for the very first time. And one of the things we're looking for when we boot up is a boot up screen that has a date of 1981. We want an 81. If we boot up and we have a 1983 screen, that means we have, unfortunately, the QI version or the quality improved. The quality improved is not what we want. As I stated earlier, let's take a look. Let's turn it on and see which version we get. Hold, keep those fingers crossed, you know, whatever you need to do, knock on wood, whatever. Let's make sure we have a 1981. Switch is on, 1981, yes. So what that means is we can use devices such as the Final Grom 99. If we had the 83 quality improved version, we wouldn't be able to use that because of the additional protection built on the TI. So good news for us. And look, we have a TI 99 4A booting. Oh boy, look at those colors. Now I have run this through my capture device but it's a pretty decent picture as you can see. Now how this works is we have to ready press any key to begin. So if I come down to my keyboard and I tap the space bar, you'll notice that we have two options. One for TI basic and nothing else. If we insert a cartridge, then we'll have another option. And with some later modern devices, we can make that list kind of a little bit longer. More on that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and boot into TI basic hitting number one. You can see we have a little boot and we have TI Basic is ready. Check it out. I wish I knew what to do. Let's go ahead and do our standard kind of thing that we like to do. And did I mention I really like this keyboard? This is pretty cool. Now here's the interesting thing on this keyboard. We do have to find things. So uh, quotations, looks like it's a shift P. 
It is not a shift P. So now to go back to delete, I have to hold my function, go back. Uh, quotation, let's try function P. It is a function P for open quotations. Ugh, that's kind of weird. So let's go ahead and put in retro combs. Uh, but I do like the sound of that keyboard. Did you hear that? That sounds really good. It feels good. They're a little tight. It's a little squished on the keys. But okay, so now it's function P. Oh, that's really weird. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Let's do 20. And let's do go to 10. And hit enter. And let's run. Now see, I've already typed that wrong. So let's go back. Are you? And I'm, I'm kind of doing this. I'm not... Uh, typing by touch typing. I'm using my fingers because I find it's easier for now. Let's go ahead and hit enter. This is the first program I've ever typed on a TI-994A. Let's see if it works. And there you go. Interesting that the color changes from blue to green. Have to figure that out. Now, I believe if I hit function plus, that'll be quit. Oh, well, that's not good. I quit. And it went back to the main menu. Why do I believe that I'm going to hit enter and my program is now toast? I can't do that. So, um, hmm, seems that that was not the way to stop, stop a program. Interesting. Okay, well, I obviously have some things I need to learn about BASIC. Uh, so instead of typing a bunch of stuff and losing it, how about we take a look at some cartridges? I, you remember I bought three cartridges. Let's see what it looks like when we insert a cartridge. So the first thing I need to do is turn off the TI. Let's start with something easy, Terminal Emulator 2. So we're gonna pop in Terminal Emulator 2. We will turn on Terminal Emulator. This thing boots pretty quickly. We're gonna go ahead and hit Space or any key, it could be any key. Oh, here we go, we have a couple of options. We have, again, one for basic. We can go two for terminal emulator two, or three for default option terminal emulator two. Let's try three default options, see what happens. And we see that that boots up. Interesting, press any key to begin, and you see that we're back. Now, most likely number three isn't working uh, because the TI modem is not connected. My guess is, for the number three option, you would have the TI modem be plugged in. It would recognize it and automatically set for default. So let's go to number two. Let's see if we can actually get into the cartridge. There we go. We can see the cartridge. This is 1980 and terminal emulator two. And there you go. So we can go through these uh, choices here to set our baud rate, our parity, our duplex, our RS-232 port, our column width. That's interesting. We can do 40, 38, 36, and 34. What is that? And then we have auto login. Now I do hope eventually to be able to connect this maybe to a bulletin board system. We may play with that like I did with the plus four. So you can see we could set that. We obviously can't use this software, but it was one that I wanted to throw in the box to see if maybe I can do something with it later. Let's go ahead and turn off the TI. Pull this one out and we're gonna plug in another one called Music Maker. Can you see that? Turn this on and press any key to begin. Let's see what we have here. And we have just the two options. We'll go number two for Music Maker. I do like that the, the software is on these solid state cartridges. That's kind of cool. It boots up pretty quickly. Music Maker. Um, now, I don't have any instructions in front of me. However, I did find some instructions online. Uh, for most TI games. So I uh, can go back through and read those and see what's going on. So it looks like we have one traditional mode, two sound graphs, three load music. No idea what I'm doing. Let's go traditional mode with number one. Sharps, oh my goodness, sharps is zero through seven. How many sharps do we want? We want all the sharps we can get. Press enter time signature. We'll use the default here for that speed. 15, we'll use the default. Oh, that's really good. Check that out. So we have our musical notation, our scales. Now, some way, I assume, let's hold my function, move my cursor. Oh, nope, not that way. Oh, okay, so it's just over. So if you move your cursor left, which is an S, D is right, E is up, X is down. Now, I am assuming that if I had a joystick, I could do this with the joystick as well. Yeah, definitely going to need the instructions. The last cartridge we're going to try is Parsec. 
Parsec is a game um, that I did demo when I was picking up the computer. Um, the vendor was nice enough to let me try all the game cartridges, make sure they work before I left. By the way, I've got uh, four more cartridges coming through an eBay. Got those for about $5 a piece, which I think is a pretty good deal. So we'll talk about those a little bit later. So let's go ahead and turn on Parsec. We'll go ahead and press any key. We'll hit number two for Parsec and we should get some sound on this. Hopefully we'll find out if my sound is working. I think I've connected everything. Uh, the, the connectors for the five pin DIN cable are a little tricky. Uh, this is the way it should look right here in this image. So here we are, here is uh, Parsec. Let's see what happens here. There we go, and uh, let's see if we, now I'm having to use the keyboard, I assume, now interesting too, sometimes the, it will fire, you have to kind of press down and hold the button, if you just tap it, you may or may not get, let's see if we can get something here, oh, there we go, so you have to hold the E key to go up, X to go down, you can go left and right if you want to give yourself some more space, or die in my case, uh, and then the Y is the fire which is kind of interesting. Let's see if we can get a little bit better at this. For those of you that like the old keystroke game, maybe you dig this. And I'm not sure what the point is or how far we go. Um, it's not like Defender in that we pick somebody up along the way. The sound appears to be pretty basic for an 8-bit computer. I um, don't think it's anything special. I think uh, what I read was there's three different voices. One of those is probably white noise. Um, it's obviously mono. There's no stereo. Boy, those are moving fast. Let's see. There we go. Let's go ahead and take uh, Unite. Oh, wait. You're, what, what did I say? Oh, oh. Ooh, those, were some, those were some mean ships right there. So there you go. There's everything that's in the box. What's next? Well, you know that budget that I said I had for the festival? I kind of went over. Uh, the same day that I purchased the TI on the way home and that evening I purchased a couple of additional items. I purchased the TI 994A to Atari 2600 joystick adapter. You saw that in the unboxing that it's not a standard uh, port. So got that for $15 from Tech Select. We'll be looking at that a little bit later. I also went ahead and picked up a Tippy. Uh, a Tippy we'll talk about is a combination of the TI and a Pi, Raspberry Pi. I also purchased the Flash ROM 99 cartridge for $35, which allows us to run ROM cartridges, images up to 32 kilobytes on an SD card. There is a Flash Grom 99 or Flash Grom I did not purchase that because at the time I didn't know if I had the QI version quality improved or not. Now that I know I don't, hallelujah, I can make that purchase later on. So some final thoughts. Well, I'm happy with my purchase. I have to admit that the computer, the box, the contents are all pristine. I'm amazed at the quality of this thing. The opportunity to learn about a 1980s computer I didn't own will be informative and fun. And it's already been a blast learning about the, I would call quirks of the TI, but probably they're just quirks because I'm a Commodore guy. So everything's gonna be a little bit different. I was glad to see an active community using the computer and modern devices available to upgrade the system. We'll be able to take this thing online in the future when I get my tippy. I will look on eBay for other devices at reasonable rates, such as a speech synthesizer and the PES. By the way, if you have a speech synthesizer or a PES that's just kind of laying around the house and you want to get rid of it, let me know. Contact me. Send me a DM on Twitter at Stephen Combs. So I hope you enjoyed this little video of me opening the box for the first time of the TI-994A, my first experience turning it on and learning a little bit more about the TI-994A along the way. Don't forget there's a great companion blog post. Be sure and check that out using the link down below. Be sure to hit like, subscribe. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to support the channel, check down below. You can finally support the channel. You can also buy me a coffee over on the blog at retrocombs.com. Yes, you can either get there from stephencombs.com or retrocombs.com. Either way, we'll get you there where you can learn how you can buy me a coffee and thank me for the work or video or information I've provided. And again, if you have something TI or Commodore related that you'd like me to take a look at on the channel, be sure and contact me on Twitter, send me a DM and we can discuss ways to get that to me. All right. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for future episodes on the TI where we'll look at expanding the features and uh, bring it, give it a little modern flair, which is what I like to do here at Retro Combs is bring a modern flair to the retro computer. So at this time, Retro Combs out.